Hi, how's it going everyone? My name is Hank and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a, a brand new year and I hope everyone had a, a pretty good break. So it's a brand new year and with new year uh, comes with new resolutions and this time you decided that uh, you are going to keep your spending under control and start doing this uh, investing thing that maybe you and uh, some of your friends have been talking about. But what is this investing thing actually all about and how do you even start? I mean, your parents never told you how to invest and they don't teach it in schools. So what do you do? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how and where to invest your first $1,000. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and this video is not financial advice. So be sure to do your own research uh, before you invest in anything. Before you decide to rush in and buy some hot stocks of some company or Pokemon cards or Bitcoin, uh, the first question that I want you to ask yourself is, is this $1,000 that you have uh, a one-time investment only or are you able to consistently add additional investments uh, week after week? For example, are you able to add an additional $100 every week after the first $1,000? There is a significant difference between the two and it could drastically change your approach uh, to how you spend your first $1,000. In scenario A, you have $1,000 and you cannot afford to invest any more money uh, week after week. So what should you do in this case? The number one thing to do here is to pay off high interest debt. So these are high interest credit card, uh, payday loans, and any immediate bills. The reason why you want to do this is because paying off a 20% interest on credit card or personal loans effectively means that you're earning a 20% return on your investment. I know that paying off a debt does not sound like an investment, but in terms of uh, mathematically, it works out to be the same thing. It can be very tempting to just uh, make the minimum payment on these loans uh, every week, week after week, uh, but paying off high interest loans is the safest investment that you can make. The uh, number two thing is to not focus on uh, investing in uh, particular shares or stocks. Uh, but hey, isn't that uh, what this channel is all about? So I am absolutely uh, not saying that you cannot buy any stocks or shares with the uh, $1,000. But the uh, main thing is that if you only have $1,000 to invest and you don't have any additional funds to uh, put into the account, now even assuming that you are getting a 20% return on your stocks for the year, uh, and that would be considered a pretty good return in uh, most years, you would only be getting $200 in return. And that's an amount that uh, you could earn on doing minimum wage, working for eight hours in uh, two days time. I could safely say that it's uh, definitely not time efficient to be constantly buying and selling small trading accounts, uh, hoping to earn a profit if your goal is to uh, build long-term wealth. Number three is going to be the most cliche sounding thing in the world, but it's going to be uh, invest in yourself. This means uh, upskilling, uh, learning new knowledge and skills uh, for improving your future earning potential. Uh, this can come in uh, many different forms. And uh, here I want to specifically uh, talk about uh, books, podcasts, and online courses. The first thing under the invest in yourself category, uh, we have the books. So there are many uh, great investment books out there. And there are two uh, really good beginner books to start off with. Uh, the first one is Rich Enough by Mary Home. Uh, she is a Kiwi author and a newspaper columnist. And the second one is The Barefoot Investor uh, by Scott Pape, uh, which is an Australian author. I have a video uh, talking about some of my favorite investment books, uh, which I would also include a link in the uh, cards. Uh, if you are someone that's more on the go, I would highly uh, recommend uh, getting these books in uh, audiobook form so that you can listen to them anywhere you go. The second good source of uh, investing resources are podcasts. Now, I'm personally a bit of a podcast junkie and I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, some of my favorites include uh, this podcast called We Study Billionaires. Now, this is a podcast where they talk about investing strategies and habits of famous investors such as Warren Buffett. And if you are someone that's uh, more into the side hustle business, 
There's also a podcast called the uh, Side Hustle Show, where they go over uh, many different uh, side hustle ideas. Some of them are more conventional and some of them a little bit uh, more out there. Speaking of side hustles, the third way to invest in yourself is to learn new skills with online courses. On sites such as uh, Skillshare, there are thousands and thousands of online courses uh, where you can learn things like photography, uh, video making, painting, and many other different skills. Now you could always uh, sell your artwork online on sites like uh, Etsy, which has become massively popular during the lockdown period. Uh, but I've also heard of more creative uh, side hustle ideas, uh, such as sharpening knives or uh, tuning a piano. And these people have managed to uh, turn those into very profitable side hustles. Let's go back to the next scenario in scenario B, where you have $1,000 to invest and you are able to invest additional amounts either weekly or monthly over a long extended period of time. In this scenario, the second question that you should ask yourself is how much time do you want to spend on uh, researching for your investments? If you have a normal day job like the majority of the people and have other hobbies that you want to do, uh, you might not want to spend all your time on researching individual companies. In this situation, you could put your money into an exchange traded fund or an ETF that tracks a particular index. So an ETF is just a collection of uh, different companies uh, all wrapped under uh, one bundle. An example of an index could be the uh, New Zealand Top 50 Index, well, which tracks the uh, top 50 uh, companies in New Zealand. I have a separate video talking about the different uh, New Zealand top 50 ETFs that you can invest in, so be sure to check that out as well. The uh, reason why I would recommend beginners to start with an ETF is because an ETF is a collection of companies so that the uh, risk gets averaged out and you won't get massive fluctuations in the daily share price of an ETF, unlike if you uh, purchase individual companies. So if a company share price suddenly drops by 20% in a day due to some bad news, such as what uh, happened recently uh, with A2 Milk, uh, you might get this massive urge to uh, sell off everything and this is where you would lock in your losses. Just because a company share is down by 10% or more does not mean that you have lost the money until uh, you actually sold the company shares. So if it's a good company uh, and you are invested in them for the long term, uh, the share price can bounce back and you wouldn't have lost anything. If you want to invest in a local ETF of the top 50 companies in New Zealand, the easiest way is to sign up to uh, investing platforms such as Sharesies or InvestNow. Uh, I have your reviews for both platforms uh, that you could check out. Now, if you use a promo link that I have included in the description, you can get some credits when you first sign up to uh, Sharesies uh, to help get you started. If you want to invest in ETFs traded on the uh, US exchange, such as the popular Vanguard ETFs, uh, you can sign up to a locally owned broker such as Hatch or a zero commission broker such as Stake. Again, I have reviews on both and links in the description below where you can get some free credits if you sign up with Hatch or free stock when you sign up with Stake. After signing up with these brokers or investing platforms, you can start by dipping your toes by just putting in a few hundred dollars into an ETF. And if you're comfortable with that, uh, you can uh, further invest more. The key here is consistency and investing over the long term. Investing for the long term with consistency in some good ETFs uh, will give you the best opportunity to accumulate wealth for our everyday investors. If you need some ideas for some of the best funds available, I also have a video on the best funds available on uh, InvestNow and also another video on some of the uh, top ETFs that uh, the Vanguard has available. In terms of investing in individual companies, for beginners, I'm not a huge advocate of putting all your money into uh, one company. Now, a lot of the day-to-day uh, -day share market fluctuation is based on human psychology and emotions rather than on how well a uh, particular company is doing financially. If you are new to the market, it can get very emotional if your stocks are doing well or conversely, if they are doing badly. 
Now, personally, I try not to put uh, more than one fifth of my portfolio into uh, one single company unless I have done some reasonable amount of research uh, on the company itself. Individual company stocks come with higher risks, uh, but also higher rewards. So this is something that you will need to balance out how much risk uh, versus reward that uh, you are willing to stomach. In conclusion, first figure out uh, if your first $1,000 is a one-time investment or part of a long-term investment plan. Now, if it's a one-time, then paying off debt and or investing in yourself could be uh, more beneficial for you. Obviously, that doesn't mean that you can't put that money into the share market to learn how it works. Uh, I do believe that the best way to learn about something is to have skin in the game. If you are looking to invest for the long term, uh, it's good to start off with some ETFs uh, before jumping into investing into single companies. And I wouldn't put your uh, entire portfolio into just one company, unless it's Tesla, of course.